thanks for joining us today. In this episode, we'll return to the beaches of Normandy with a 94-year-old combat medic who landed on Omaha Beach in the first wave, witness the power of healing through salsa music, and look inside VA's life-changing adaptive sports program. But first, let's go to Tampa, where a Navy veteran and a VA prosthesis have formed a meaningful relationship to regain something lost. I tell her, I said, you know, if I, she gets to hollering at me, I'll just pull it off, put it on the table, and say, talk to the ear, and I'll go in the other room. <laughs> he is dying to wait to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, Excellent. Excellent. But, you know, you might say I've got a pretty good attitude yeah. toward it. Growing old requires, growing up isn't. And I refuse to grow up. And I refuse to let this get me down. Here he comes with his paint kit. <laughs> How you doing, bud? It's always a joy. For the yeah, last 35 years, I tend not to see people as patients. Um, I, I call it my big happy family because you're entering a very intimate part of their world. And that person's happy at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very happy. This is what I look like most of the time. But I don't give up. I ended up with cancer in the whole ear area and everything, and down into my jaw and down my neck. They drastically went surgical after it, and that's when I lost the ear. Before it totally healed, they put me through 40 days of radiation every day, five days a week. I've never lost my hearing. I've never lost my taste buds. But they had to take out two salivary glands and 22 lymph nodes, muscle and tissue, and give me a half a facelift. They stretched everything that they could. And this is what I've got. That's what I deal with. They've done uh, two grafts that didn't stick, 40 treatments of oxygen therapy. That's sitting in a tube for two hours a day. And then just press it into place. Uh, just appearance. Mm -hmm. It don't change me any. Right. <laughs> Women give up breasts, they give up their baby diapers. They give up a lot of stuff for, for cancer, right? All right, I lost an ear for it. Big deal, I'm still here. Well, I can't do what I used to do, but I think that's due to the radiation in my 73 years. Because I drove truck for 42 years. Oh, wow. Semi, cross country. Wow, what a wow. difference. Well, the man is not the first, first. I'm holding the side of the head to, to something to put my glasses on. You know, basically everybody knows about hearing aids, dentures, prosthetic limbs. But if you said to somebody, a prosthetic nose, it would, it, it, I never knew. That's something to put my glasses on now. It's always a question, if that happened to you, your mind is going nuts because it's not cosmetic. For your psychological state, it's very important. I've had patients that have sat at home for five years, will not leave the house. And for me to get them out of the house to get to the office and then make them something so they can go out, it, it's a big deal. Damn, I got ears again. Thank you. I think that looks fantastic. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I ain't that much of a pain to work with, am I? No, 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 no. It does good work. The VA in Tampa area is the best VA treatment I've had. Seems like they really care about the vet. Turn around there so I can see. I haven't seen you yet with food. Wow. You gotta get used to me again, don't you? Yes, I do. If they see you more than twice, they know your name when you walk in, you know, and that, right? that helps. You look pretty good from here. From here, it's... Thanks again. The custom-made prosthesis is one of many made for veterans at the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital. To learn more about VA rehabilitation and prosthetic services, visit prosthetics.va.gov. The Kennedy Center recently hosted Son Veteranos, a salsa band from Puerto Rico made up entirely of military veterans. This talented group of musicians came together through VA to discover the transformative power of music. I want everybody to look at us as a big group and don't think that we are patients or something from the VA, we are professionals. And 
I believe that anywhere we go, with the music that we play, people will respond. And that also helps us. Buenas noches. Today is a special evening because not only we get to celebrate America's birthday, we get to celebrate it with salsa. This is Son Veterano. We are all veterans here. Thank you. I'm one of the singers, right? And when I'm singing that song, my eyes are in, in the eyes of the people, you know? And, and, and you see their happiness in their eyes. And when I see that, it just keeps, keeps me going. You know, it keeps me keep on singing. It really, really, really helps you in the inner man. And it, it, it brings out the best in you. It's a good therapy, and it's not just good for us. It's also good for my fellow veterans, you know, that are in the process of healing, because this is a process. Each song has a different message. To live and to have fun. Vive y vacila, that's what you Yeah, do, right? vive y vacila. To live and have fun, you know? So that's what we're trying to do. It's a message for people to, to understand that we come from a small island with a big heart and a, and a, and a great power to help people to heal. Son Veterano, remember that name. We come from the heart. Music therapy is a creative outlet with documented benefits in relieving symptoms of post-traumatic stress and depression. It can reduce pain and helps veterans maintain a high quality of life. To discover what opportunities may be available in your area, visit rehab.va.gov slash rec therapy. When we come back, an Army veteran applies the unbreakable warrior spirit to wheelchair basketball. creative process, either planning um, a piece of art or in the process of actually creating the piece of art, um, it gets me out of myself and um, I don't think about my life. I just think about this piece of art that I want to do. My art gives me a voice because it gets me out of that terror. I have an irrational fear of people because of my PTSD. Now this piece is sculpted from a bare piece of clay. So it's, it's a block when it starts. And so everything on here is hand sculpted and hand done. It's very meticulous. And as a result, when you're doing it, you, time passes, the world passes. When I came home from Vietnam, I came back with PTSD. So you know that when we came back, we didn't admit that we had a problem. Yeah. And so I didn't admit that I had a problem for over 30 years. The art brings you to a bit of calmness that you can't get in any other way of life. It takes the fear of people away from me. Therapeutically, that's what it does. It gets me away from that. It gets me out of my head. Welcome back to the American Veteran. My name is Orlando Perez, U.S. Army. In the training for that deployment, I fell from the wall, practice wall, and the rocks that hit my spinal cord. I started limping a little bit on the PT test, and when they researched, they found a tumor in my spinal cord. What I was really concerned is, how am I gonna take care of my family? And that was the, the big shock, and the Department of Veteran Affairs took over, and they, they have taken care of me since then. After that, 
it was a matter of surviving and just finding out how, how to redo things in society. I heard a lot about adaptive sports, but um, I really did not want to hear it. I did not really want to understand what it was. I thought it was a pity party. Um, it took a minute for me to actually find a group that was a group of veterans that invited me to the National Veterans Wheelchair Games, and they were in Puerto Rico. After my first event, it was the 100 meter race. Just the, uh, my mom, my ex-wife, and my kid, just seeing how excited they were when, when I won the gold medal, changed my life. I, don't, I saw it as a blessing at that point. I fell in love with wheelchair basketball and decided to practice. And they were doing tryouts to go to the very first Pan American Games and I was able to make it as a rookie to the Puerto Rico national team and everything kicked off from there. It, it, it's not easy and we are athletes. Just watching all these athletes that mentor me and seeing that they train every day, uh, they overcome adversity every day, just like any other athlete does, you know? And you, and you have to learn how to shoot out of a chair and you have to learn how to push in a wheelchair as fast as you can. I don't need my legs, my legs are overrated. Uh, I've done more sitting on this wheelchair and doing adaptive sports than I could have done ever in my life. So adaptive sports actually did save my life in, in a way. Without it, I would never have had the life that I have. And that's all through the VA. Just keep rolling and keep thriving because there's no, there's no reason why we, we shouldn't. VA provides a training allowance to veterans with disabilities training in Paralympic sports. To learn more about what's available to you, visit blogs.va.gov slash NVSPSE. From anxiety to depression to post-traumatic stress, many conditions affect our mental health. VA's recovery-oriented approach empowers veterans to take charge of their treatment and live a full and meaningful life. I started coming to the VA nine years ago, I was really in a bad way. I was uh, angry, I was suicidal, I was even abusive. Through their program, I've, uh, I've become a much better person. I've certainly seen uh, really mental health take a kind of a primary mission point for the VA. We offer the highest quality of care here. We have made leaps and bounds in terms of open access, walk-in clinics, treatment on demand. The VA is unparalleled in terms of the services that it can provide to veterans. Telehealth is one of the VA's major transformational initiatives. A lot of our patients are living in rural areas, remote areas. I have lots of veterans who were truck drivers, and so driving is a big part of their trigger so now they don't have to travel and we can connect virtually anywhere. A civilian facility, you're more of a number. You're more of a dollar sign. And here where they focus on veterans, it almost feels like home. People who've suffered a great deal, they sometimes feel like they've reached their suffering quota and they'd like to not have any more pain. That's not really what being a human being is all about. We seem to be designed to endure a great deal of pain, otherwise we still wouldn't exist. We're just not designed to endure it alone. I'm a mental health provider now, and I don't know what I would say if I had a patient like me. It took a long time, but I think actually the first inkling of trust was when Dr. Mick pulled me in for our very first individual session, that she was willing to just sit back and hear what I had to say. That's all I needed right then. The first thing to do as a clinician is just to be with that person in that place and acknowledge their pain. That kind of presence sends a message. I am here for you and I'm here for you even if we're going to sit here an hour and you're not going to say a thing. That's just fine. Come back and see me again and we'll do the same thing. The people with PTSD aren't crazy. They're having a normal reaction to a crazy experience. VA providers are some of the best trained PTSD and trauma providers in the world. 
And I think the more we kind of have learned and understood PTSD, it's really become one of the most treatable conditions we have in mental health. So Mr. Quinones is a Vietnam veteran. When we first met, I did think to myself, this is probably one of the most challenging PTSD veterans I have ever come across. But I also knew that the therapies that we were offering could work for him. Dr. Lance helped me so much that I just can't believe it. I, I can't believe that there's a human being alive that could do for me what she did. If she wouldn't have intervened, I believe I would have committed suicide. I know I would have. We have approximately 20 veterans a day who are dying by suicide. Of that 20, six of them are connected with mental health services here at the VA. 14 are not. We want to be able to find the veterans who are not connected so we can help reduce that number, because any number over zero is too high. We always talk about our staff being dedicated, right? You're that everywhere. But these folks are dedicated in a different way. A lot of them come from a veteran families. So they are veterans. Their grandfather was a veteran. It's more than dedication. It's, um, it's, it's family. So now I currently work for the VA. Everyone I work with is a veteran. I love that. Because I think so much of what most service members miss is that camaraderie, that sense of family, that brotherhood and sisterhood that, that you can't find. It. We want to take care of everybody and we want our veterans to know we're proud of them. The VA is a place where they can be a part of a family. And I say this to them, things can be better than you can even imagine right now. There's no reason for you to believe that. You don't have to believe it, I'll believe it for you. But you wait and see. Whether your military role ended two decades ago or two days ago, you share with veterans everywhere the common bond of duty, honor, and service to our nation. To connect with VA mental health resources, visit maketheconnection.net. If you're in crisis, call the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-8255 and press 1, or text 838-255. When we come back, 94-year-old Charles Shea reflects on his lifelong connection to the beaches of Normandy. When Mark first told me he was coming home, that was one of the best moments of my life. But I guess I shouldn't have been surprised to find that he wasn't really the same after his deployment. Before he went overseas, Mark and I spent a lot of time outdoors. We try to guess how tall the redwoods are. Mark, who loved to laugh, was gone. He was always on edge and so disconnected from us. I just wanted him to think about her and how much we needed him. But he was always getting angry or quiet or pulling away from us. got pretty bad. And then he started talking about how things would be better off without him. That's when we called the Veterans Crisis Line, who connected us with a counselor at our local VA. Mark's counselors worked with us to make a safety plan for him, a list of suicide warning signs and steps to take when we saw them. Whenever Mark felt himself slipping back into that dark place, we'd look at the safety plan for the steps he could take to stay grounded and connected. Glimpses of the old Mark started coming back. There were times he could go through one or two steps on his own and see a difference. Sometimes we had to call on others to help. Some days it still seems impossible, but we're keeping with his treatment strategy, going to counseling, and working with the doctors at the VA. It works. 
It's become such an important part of his recovery. We're getting there. Together. Welcome back to the American Veteran. On the 74th anniversary of D-Day, veteran Charles Shea returned to the beaches of the Normandy Landing. His spiritual connections to the French region and to the brothers he lost during the invasion remains at the forefront of his life. What is in my heart? Well, it's a very serious uh, affair that is in my heart. I'm a Penobscot Indian, living on the Penobscot Indian Reservation. Well, I was uh, unfortunately uh, participated in two wars during my military service. I experienced in both occasions uh, things that affected my life. Many of them have never heard of Omaha Beach before they landed and made the invasion. I was one of them. I landed at 0630 in the first wave. Once we got in the area of the beach, the Germans had placed uh, these obstacles under the water all up and down the beach. And of course, we were receiving uh, fire from the, the shores by the Germans, machine gun fire, small arms, mortars. Survival was uh, on the minds of everybody. When we jumped into the water, I landed into water up to my chest. I went from one obstacle to the next, then I left and ran to the beach, and uh, I made it. Seeing so many dead, it was very difficult. And I had to clear my mind from everything, uh, what I was seeing and, and doing the work that I was trained to do. And I started treating men with, uh, that had been wounded, bullet wounds, broken limbs. Many of the wounded men were floundering. They could not help themselves, they could not move and they were drowning. So I dropped what I was doing on the shoreline and I went back to the water. Once I was able to move, I, I started moving up and down the beach, looking for wounded and treating them. And while I was doing this, I came across a friend of mine that I had trained with in England. He was a medic also, and he had a serious stomach wound. His name was Edward Morosovich. When I saw him, I knew that he was dying. He knew it also, I think. And uh, I gave him a shot of morphine to ease his pain. And uh, I did what I could for him, but I could not save his life. And, well, he passed on. I often wondered how come I was able to survive two wars and not even be injured once. Dear veterans, dear friends, dear all, thank you for being at our side today to celebrate D-Day and especially honoring Native American soldiers who took part to the Battle of Normandy. We are uh, very honored to be here today and humbled to uh, Give thanks to all of the people of France for Marie Lagrande um, for organizing uh, with the native people to remember Charles Shea while he is here with such a, a hero among us. So we're very humbled. The Indian nations answered massively to the call of war. By the end of the war, over 44,000 American Indians had served in the U.S. Army. Some tribes sent 70% of their valid men into war. These American Indians would prove their valor on all the theater of operations of World War II, winning six Congressional Medal of Honor, 51 Silver Stars, and 47 Bronze Stars. A great number of these amazing warriors fought here in Normandy. 
150 Native Americans left their homes to defend the United States in World War II. Not only did they do their part, but they went above and beyond any expectations. A third of all eligible Native Americans ended up fighting in World War II, and over 99% of the eligible registered for draft. Today, we continue to honor the past and remember the sacrifice of those who went before us. And we express our gratitude for the sacrifice they made for our freedom. We have dedicated uh, on Normandy itself the Charles J. Park. Although it bears my name, it is not specifically for me. It was meant to uh, recognize all Native Americans. During the Second World War and perhaps in the First World War, there were many Native American veterans serving. I myself believe, they may think I'm foolish, but I believe that uh, I can establish contact with the men, with their souls that are still wandering on that beach. I seem to have met people that are only helping me uh, establish my life and doing some of the things that I had dreamed of in my, during my life. And uh, well, this is the end result and I'm very happy with everything. I'm happy with everything that has happened to me. Shea was one of 175 Native Americans who participated in the D-Day invasion. For more of his incredible story and veterans like him, visit our blog, Vantage Point, at blogs.va.gov. That's it for the American Veteran. We're honored to bring these stories to you. These stories and more can be found online at Vantage Point, where you can learn more about the benefits you've earned, read stories from your community, and discover everything that's happening during Veterans Month. Check out our Veterans Channel on Defense TV and subscribe to our podcast, Born to Battle. Thanks for watching. See you next time.